How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with new brewery time. Yeah, little Hub City Brewing in their uh, Juice Town. I assume if the beer is called Juice Town, it's going to be a 6.8% hazy IPA. This comes courtesy of my boy Gray. His boy opened this brewery, he sent me pictures of it, and it actually looked pretty awesome there. They're out of Jackson, Tennessee. And uh, it was crazy. They got like a couple couple lean bowling alley in there. Really nice, big, expansive brewery. So it looks like they could actually, you know, it sucks because you have to open during COVID. Um, but they're down in Tennessee, so not a lot of people take it seriously down there. I'm not saying they don't. I'm saying down south is a little bit special. And, uh, and uh, they have expansive room there. So you should be able to kind of like weather this a little bit. I know it's really tough, but the good brewery is doing good things tend to get through. Let's not talk about COVID. Let's talk about this beer. And he sent this off with this, and he actually sent this off with a, um, a, a barrel-aged Scotch Wee Heavy, which I'm going to review directly after this one. So it's a little bit of a uh, Hub City slash Gray's Beer Mail kind of night. So, I mean, you're talking six and change. That looks like a triple IPA. That is butternut squash soup. That you could stick... A spoon in and have it sit up vertically that is dense haze could be on the cusp of a little bit of oxidation this is actually um crowlered 12 two weeks ago so yeah, you kind of get to the edge of where crowling kind of you know some a lot of breweries don't want to go past two weeks so take that for what it's worth for the whole oxidation issue but we'll see what's what it doesn't look like it's oxidized at a point where it's going to affect the beer adversely it, it could knock down a little bit of their aromatics knock down a little bit of the vibrancy of a uh, juicy kind of hop but i don't think it's going to come off sideways um and get that nice it was a fluffy creamy head kind of dissipated in a little bit of rockiness now but just dense 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 is the name crowler why is it right I, I don't i mean there's like four awesome crowlers in the whole world yeah <sighs> design wise they're usually made generic because they gotta put a bunch of different beers in them it's gonna nose on the sucker So there's definitely a big citrus component here. They're talking about this kind of uh, juice town. It is all the citrus. Uh, a little bit of pithy citrus. Not a ton of rindiness, more pithiness with a little bit of citrus juiciness. There's definitely grapefruit. There's definitely big gobs of orange there. Maybe even a little bit of pineapple. But it, that is the at least the calling card I get on the nose. A little bit of green. Done and done. It's not a gigantic nose, but pretty aggressive. 6% and change. Hazy. Let's dive in. Cheers. Oh, that's really vibrant orange. Like, really vibrant orange. Like they put a scoop of tang in there, kind of orange. And I don't mean that in a negative way. So you get a big pop of that orange in there. It's very bright, very ripe, very orangey orange. You get that little grapefruit pithiness. You know, knock that kind of pineapple out of there and just lean heavily into that kind of bright orange kind of citrus kind of category. You get a little bit of green. You do get a relatively aggressive carbonic acid on this. And, um, you know, some breweries lean into that and people don't mind it at all. They might even find it as a pleasurable thing. But the carbonic acid level on this beer is big enough for me to not be turned off by it, but just be like... <sighs> I've always likened carbonic acid to truffle oil. Not truffles. Truffles are fantastic. But truffle oil... I I know this is going to be fucking... What do they call it? Sacrilege to actually say this. I don't mind truffle oil. I know chefs are like, truffle oil is the devil. It's the worst thing ever to happen to color and cooking and whatnot. If you, you lightly use truffle oil in a very meaningful way without getting too heavy-handed i think it's it can do its magic it can get the essence of that truffle work with whatever you're cooking and add, elevate the dish a little bit but so many people just use it as a crutch in a, in a meal and it just comes off as truffle oil, not as truffles and i kind of think that's way kind of carbonic acid works some people just don't care you know what i mean like some people just like give me all the truffle you possibly can and um, with carbonic acid, it has this bittering component that kind of that's a bisect bittering in a hop, but it gets kind of close to it. So if you pair up 
um, you know, a beer that has a decent level of green hoppiness, and then you just throw a little bit of carbonic acid in there, it helps prop up that bitterness and ends up being kind of like a kind of just a little bit of an elevation, like I talked about previously, that kind of truffle oil. But if you get a little bit too heavy handed for it, to my liking, it just comes like a very sore spot or th green thumb not a green thumb that's someone to grow shit um it's just a, a red flag let's use that one because what the fuck um and that's kind of where it comes off here so i like the beer i dig the beer i like the citrus level it's very fun like i said it had like the almost little scoop of tang in there in a good way i'm not calling it synthetic the mouth feels nice carbonation's on point it's two weeks in, in a crowler so it's held up decently well in a vessel that's not really meant to be held up all that well it's just that carbonic acid is a little bit bigger than i would personally like and like i said there's some people that to this day go i don't know what the fuck you're even talking about i drank the same beer and i don't even understand it it's just a sensitivity thing man like some people just aren't sensitive to it just like flaws in beers i know some people who don't i know brewers who own breweries successful breweries who don't know what the acid all tastes like I just don't, because sometimes we taste stuff different than other people. There's nothing wrong with that. I just I tend to be a little bit kind of sensitive to that to that kind of carbonic acid, and the other big one is that kind of metallic astringency I talk about with lower uh, ABV, kind of darker beers. It's kind of, kind of that uh, acidicness that comes from malt if you get a little bit too funky with it, or a little roasty with it, or water treatment. I haven't figured out which one it is for me yet. But anyway, so it's nice. It's fine. It's a tasty hazy. I dig the relatively lower ABV side of things. Anything coming in at sub 7% always kind of tickles my fancy. That citrus comes off cool. It's just in a perfect world, that carbonic acid. And this is why I hate it so much. Because it not only kind of... It's not only loud on my palate. And by that I mean it's just like I just can't ignore it. I believe it's loud enough to where it drowns out other good parts of the beer. Like I feel like this would be a quite a bit more vibrant um the kind of citrus side of things and the fruity side of things hop wise but that carbonic acid acts as like a kind of muffler as a silencer on those flavors for me so it doesn't let me experience the beer the way i think a lot of other people kind of experience it so that's why when i go into these beers that kind of show it that way i really want to lean heavily into this is a personal kind of thing for me that kind of affects the beer adversely at times for me now like i said it's not adverse here this crowler is going to be drank it's not that bad of a beer i'm not calling it bad by any stretch of imagination it's tasty i like what it's showing it's just i could do without that level of carbonic acid that's just me anyway so let's talk about it this is one of the better hazy ips because that's what it is 6.8 percent i keep saying six eight it's six eight right now. god damn it i don't see the label i don't know if i'm fucking up um even with all that being said, it's it's worthy of leaning into the conversation. It's not towards the top, obviously. Anything with that carbonic thing just doesn't really do it for me. But I don't think it's a bad beer. In a first foray into a brewery I've never had before, I can tell I would dig this beer if it didn't have that carbonic thing. Value availability, no idea. Gray, let me know what's what when it comes to this beer and how much it costs. And leave you with, if you like what, will you like this beer? If you like new school juicy hazies, you're not affected by carbonic acid. It's kind of like a thing where... I've never had it. This is going to be crazy. People are going to get angry. I've never had a headache before. That sounds fake, right? It's not. I've never fucking had a headache before in my life. I think I might have, but I just didn't know it was a headache because I don't have them. But I suffer from crazy heartburn. So I don't really know what a headache's all about. But I know what the fuck heartburn's all about. So when I say people that don't <laughs> aren't affected by carbonic acid, you probably don't know what that is because you're not affected by it. So if you like beers from breweries like Foam from dancing gnome um who else who else is there's one of the brewery i can't think of right now they lean heavily into carbonic acid there's breweries that do so if you see people kind of talk about that thing around these beers and you don't know what they're talking about you'll probably like this beer so there you go another a little bit of a new brewery review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it massive beers for the whole social media stuff, Beer Massif. If you want to check me out, then the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying some new beer right now. We'll see you next time. Cheers.